the whole society um, was forgetting at the time, because think of society in the 20s and 30s and 40s splitting apart. Every nation was important. Every national identity was important. And he said we saw 50 years before them that uh, we can't be broken up into pieces um, and that everything is one. And Niels Bohr, who is the popular vision of quantum mechanics today, whose vision is the popular one today, um, is much less into the whole existing. He believes only the parts exist. Um, now, it is true that only the parts exist, but they exist within a whole, you know. The parts exist inside of a whole that is complete. And you cannot just forget the whole and leave it out. He says you can never know the whole. All you can know is any little thing you're staring at. Um, your perception creates reality and stuff. So Niels Bohr stops there, uh, short of the whole, and he talks about how it's more important in the 30s and 40s to be part of a small scattered group. Anyways, induction works fine if you start with philosophy as your base. Then you can take a meaningful metaphor from quantum mechanics. Uh, you know, that we've got all these electrons, but they're unified by a field or whatever. But anyways, let's continue. Now the questioner says, Niels Bohr is the mainstream um, uh, thinker on this. And uh, so then Bohm says that uh, people accept Niels Bohr and his ideas, but they don't necessarily understand his theory. They don't really get it because he says it's very subtle. Now David Bohm says that he used to like Niels Bohr's theory because Niels Bohr's theory saw the instrument taking the measurement and that thing being measured as interacting as part of a whole instead of fragmenting it into yet another small part that had no effect you know that, that's, that you can never relate to the outside world um, and then going into the parts of there instead of doing that uh, Niels Bohr was offering a system here saying that this this experiment when we take the measurement is affected somehow but then David Bohm says the one thing that he didn't agree with with Niels Bohr was that Niels said that there's no way to make a concept of the whole we can never know the whole we can never know anything about the whole we can know only little pieces of the parts so if that's the case it's meaningless to say anything about there being a whole at all. If you're going to go that far, then you basically said that everything is a little teeny part and we can never know anything but the parts. Now, what's in it? let's concretize that real quick. So if, if Newton can know the whole universe just by standing on Earth and, and doing calculations, he can know the entire universe in the sense that he knows gravity. So can we know the whole? Can we understand the whole? Or can we, can we only understand those things which we perceive or something like that? And um, it's fine to say we only understand things we perceive, but they give us insight into the whole. But Niels Bohr rejected that, said you can never have insight into the whole. You can't have a concept of the whole. You can't have the whole understood. You can't be, have the whole in your mind or whatever. There's, there's no way to approach it conceptually, the whole. And uh, this is what Bohm rejects. Now, as he says there in the video, that means the mathematics of uh, these interpretations can just give you the probabilities of what should happen probably but it can't tell you anything about the nature of what's happening it can't tell you what's really going on what's really happening it can just give you mathematical probabilities and Bohm has to take another step back and say wait 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 there is a hole and we can know things about it you gotta back up here so then David Bohm says that in 1951 he came up with a new interpretation, a different, a new idea. He came up with this new concept that an electron is a particle. That's true. And that it, is oper it operates inside of a field, which is a wave function. And the wave function can change, but it will still inform the electron. The electron travels within a field, uh, and so that's why physicists are so confused about this. Sometimes it acts like a particle and sometimes it acts like a wave. Well, actually there's a wave function which transmits information to the electron of what to do and how to act and so forth. That's the interpretation that Bohm gives. Now you see this is a new idea to say that the electron is real and the wave function is real and that we have to talk about both of them somehow. Right? That, that's not how physicists want to do it. They want the wave function to be there when they measure it in certain ways, and they want the particle to be there when they measure it in other ways, and they want to ignore the presence of the particle and wave function at all times. They think they can, by perceiving it, they can change it, they think. 
but they, they're missing track of the whole. There's no way you can cut this little teeny part off and have these little miracles like this. Now he says there are many different types of fields. There's the electromagnetic field and the magnetic field. Um, and he says it, uh, the quantum field has similarities to these, but it is not an exact um, translation because it doesn't, the intensity of the field doesn't matter for subatomic particles. It doesn't matter how intense the field is. The field gets its effect across no matter what. That's not true with, with magnet, magnetism, the magnetic field. Sprinkle iron filings around, you can see different strengths and they, they interact with things differently. Uh, even gravitational field is that way. The further away you get, the less gravitational effect there is on it, on an object. Um, but this is not true in the subatomic realm. You cannot get a di greater distance between things and cause any weakening of the field. And he says this is because this is the, the, for the field, the wave function, is based on the form rather than the intensity of the field. The form that the field takes rather than the intensity of the field. Now let's understand that a little bit. He gives an example. There's a, uh, you've got a cork in a bathtub and you drop something and the more that the waves go outward the less the cork bobs or the further out it is the smaller bob it will get. And uh, he says in subatomic particles you can have an electron really far away interact with exactly the same energy as if it were close by. And how could that be if the field is dissipating with distance? Then the interviewer says, so you have a field that does not drop off with distance? And Bohm clarifies, it does drop off with distance, the, but its effect doesn't drop off. The effect remains. So let's get an analogy. He's got an excellent analogy. Think of a, a warship, a boat, uh, it doesn't even have to be a warship, a fishing vessel, right? It's go out there on the ocean and it receives a transmission from shore that says this or that. Tornadoes coming, come back, go further out for this, these fish, uh, whatever. And so then the fishing boat changes direction. Now, is it the wave that caused it to change direction, or did the wave carry information that made it change direction? And see, he says it's not me necessarily a mechanistic reaction. Uh, if it were a mechanistic reaction, then that electron really far away would have a different reaction than the electron close by because of the weakening of the field. So it can't be a mechanistic, it can't be a mechanic reaction. It has to be an information reaction. The electron will, will uh, like the boat, even if the boat was really far away and it got the signal was very weak, uh, they would still, you know, if, as long as they understand the signal, they would still do exactly what the signal st said. So that's where even though the radio waves are much weaker, you need a higher gain antenna or whatever to get the message. If you do get the message, then the effectiveness of the message is 100% just like if you were closer to it, regardless of the weakening of the field. So it's a, a field in which information is the primary actor, uh, in which information unites things rather than physical forces uniting things. Then, David Bohm mentions, this goes back to an old idea of Aristotle's, that there can be a formative cause. It can be a cause not related to the intensity, not related to the, the substance of whatever, but to just the nature of the thing as such, like the form of the radio wave gave the same signal to the captain or to the ship's computer that was guiding the steering. The form of the radio wave gives the same effect regardless of the intensity of the radio wave, how far away the ship is or whatever. And it's an idea that Aristotle said, is that all, not all cause and effect uh, is mechanistic in this way. There can be such thing as the form having some of being the cause. Then Bohm gives an example. He says, like the form of the DNA is carried into the R RNA and, and so on, and, and from that you have the results. And it's, it's the form the DNA is in, and it's not necessarily that the DNA goes around hammering things together to build things. The DNA is just there, and its form is the cause. Its form gives rise to the results that we know. So there can be a cause coming from just form. So at about 5 minutes and 55 seconds, he says, so the form is fundamental, and the electron responds with this form. I don't know if you meant to say to this form, that the electron has a response 